When I was 16, some friends and I went to an outdoor concert, festival type thing. We parked at the mall and took a shuttle to the venue. For perspective, the mall is a 20 minute drive from our homes and the venue is another 20 minutes away in a different direction. During the concert, I ended up losing my friends in the crowd. I didn't care much as I wanted to get to the front, and I could just call them after the concert had ended. Well, of course, I lose my phone somewhere in these sea of people, and don't even notice until the last show wraps up. I search the ground as the people dissipate with no luck. Reluctantly, I just hop on the bus heading back to the mall, hoping to meet them at the car. The car is gone and I start to freak out a little bit. It's 10pm when I head to the bus station to see when the next bus to my city is coming. Just my luck, it happens to be Memorial Day, so no bus is until 10am. I borrow a stranger's phone and call the two numbers that I know, my mom and brother. My mom doesn't answer but my brother does. He basically gives me the sex to suck talk and hangs up. So I'm alone, scared and a little drunk in a city that I don't know. I try walking but quickly give up when I realize that I'm basically walking down a random highway toward who knows where. Back at the station, I'm just staring at the map when a stranger creeps up behind me. He asks me where I'm headed and I tell him the truth. He conveniently is going to the same city and asks if I would like to split a cab. Realizing this is my only option, as I didn't have enough of my own, we get in the car. It turns out that he had even less than I did. We barely have enough to get to the heart of the city, which is a 10 minute drive from my house, but at least I know my way home from there. During the drive, this guy gets progressively more creepy. He's aware that I'm 16 and he's 25, but he scoots closer every minute, touching me, insisting that I come back with him to his place, and even writes his phone number on my bare leg. As we get there, I realize the situation that I'm in. We were about to get out into this quiet area at 2am, and the cabbie is going to drive off, leaving no one here to hear me scream. The second that he gets out, I turn to the driver and beg him to take me a few streets further, so I can at least put some distance from him and me. The cab driver hadn't said a word the whole way, but he definitely heard everything. He asks me for my address and he drives me all the way home. The creeper watches as the cab drives off, with me still inside. When we got to my home, I offered to wake my mom up to pay him, but he declined, saying that he's just glad that I'm safe. I broke in through the kitchen window, got to bed, and cried my tears of relief for who knows how long. This happened to me when I was a kid, ten to be exact. I grew up in a military family and lived in the Middle East for a significant portion of my life. Because of this, we traveled frequently to different countries because of the low cost and proximity. On this particular vacation, we flew into Cairo, Egypt for a long weekend and we only lived like 2-3 to three hours away. It was late at night and we were staying at the Marriott Hotel, which had a taxi shuttle service that was supposed to pick us up. For some reason, our driver never showed, so we were forced to take a regular cab to take us there, which took forever to find that late at night. We finally found one that was offering us a pretty good deal. They don't run by meters instead, they just give a flat rate that they choose, and headed towards the hotel. Out of nowhere, another taxi basically t-bones us in the middle of the road, causing us to stop. There aren't really defiant roads in a lot of Arab places, so it isn't really that surprising that we got hit. In Arab nature, the two drivers get out of the cars, each yelling that it was the other's fault, and looking like they were going to throw hands. Eventually, they got back into their respective taxis and parted ways. My family and I were completely taken aback. We had been in Egypt less than two hours and have already had quite the adventure. When we finally got to the hotel, exhausted as it must have been at 3am by this point, our driver helped us get all of our bags out and get settled, and told us that he felt so bad about the car accident, that he offered to pick us up the next morning and take us to the Great Pyramids, which was on our agenda for a super cheap rate. My parents agreed and decided on a time for him to come though, I can't remember when. Flash forward to the next morning. 
Everyone is ready for the day, excited to see how crazy it was going to be. Our driver was outside waiting for us, leaning against the car like someone in an old movie would, right when he said he would be there. I'm a blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl that had a deep tan at the time, and being in Egypt, that was a rare sight. When the driver saw me in the daylight, he gave me the creepiest, most unsettling look that sent chills down my spine, even as a ten-year-old. I knew something wasn't right with him. Nonetheless, we got in his taxi and headed towards the pyramids. He continued to try and talk to me and joke around with me the whole ride, something I found to be extremely creepy and bold since both my parents were in the cab. We get super close and there is an entrance that people can go through and walk the long distance to the pyramids, and there is an entrance that taxis can go through. You have to pay to see them, it's strange but true. Our driver keeps making jokes about my blonde hair and blue eyes and bringing up that he could get me into the pyramids for free, so my parents wouldn't have to pay the extra ticket price. We laughed it off and my parents paid him and said thank you and began to exit the taxi. I don't remember how it happened, but at some point after I got out of the car he did too, and he directed me towards his trunk. I was confused and thought that we had forgotten something, so I stayed behind as my parents walked towards the gate to get whatever I thought we had left. The driver pops the trunk but there wasn't anything in it. He grabbed my arm and put a hand on my back trying to push me into the trunk and said, I'm getting you in for free, over and over again as I resisted. Naturally, I freaked out and screamed out to my mom and dad at the top of my lungs, terrified. When they heard me and noticed that I wasn't behind them, they started sprinting back to the car. When the driver heard me scream, he immediately let go of me, closed the trunk, and drove away just as my parents started to run to me. I was crying my eyes out. Terrified out of my mind knowing that a taxi driver tried to put me in his trunk and drove away the second that I screamed for help. It's scary to think what could have happened to me had he been stronger and more prepared or faster. He is the reason that I am still terrified of taxis, Ubers, Lyfts, and any car service of that nature. This happened quite a while ago. My lifestyle at the time was very high risk. This story means a lot to me as it restored my much needed faith in humanity. To explain why this incident meant so much to me, I need to provide a bit of backstory. I live in a really sketchy part of town. The particular building I lived in was a refurbished loft type with a very ugly history. You could still see the damage in the concrete walls from all the gunfire that it had taken at one point. Talking the pizza guy into delivering was always fun. No sir, it's not still a crime scene. Yes, real people live here. There was a local gas station within walking distance. Your typical shady place populated by shady people doing shady things. I had and still have a tendency to be somewhat chatty and polite when spoken to by strangers. Especially if I frequent that store and see them often. I wound up making friends with a man named Houston, who had a talent for obtaining recreational plant life. We would hang out and philosophize about life and the like. I just felt like he had a good soul. I was coming home from a bar that I frequented one night. It was a Friday and that area was a popular night spot so at closing time cabs would line up. I was quite drunk but sober enough to know better than to drive. The cab driver was talkative and I was not. I just wanted to go home and watch the world spin. Almost immediately out of his mouth came some of the most lecherous and disgusting things I'd ever heard. He would arc his neck around while driving, lick his lips and say just horrible things. And the worst part was not only did he have me in a moving vehicle, but he knew where I lived. I had no phone and just enough money for the ride home and I was terrified. You want me to pull in so I can lick you? No thank you, I'd like to go home and vomit. Being the smartass that I was, I said that. It was as if I hadn't said anything at all to the man though. He kept turning around and reaching out to grab me as I swerved out of his reach. Hey, show me him, I want to see him. The situation escalated when he started to drive around aimlessly pulling into dark complexes and slowing down to try and grab me. 
I had to do something, so I did something that I don't think he was expecting. I flirted with him. I leaned over the front seat and gave him my best drunk and seductive face and said, Do you want a party? He stopped, looking blank for a moment before a huge grin widening across his face. Oh yeah, where do you want a party? You want a party here? He started to adjust himself and I wanted to rip that freaking thing off. No, not here. Let's get some beer and go to my place. He agreed and I led him to my local gas station. Pull in here and I'll go get some. What do you like? I said sweetly. He said he didn't care and as soon as he parked I grabbed my bag and got out. He sat there waiting. My voice must have had an obvious tone of panic as I asked the lady behind the bulletproof glass. Is Houston here? She looked concerned and shouted for him. He came out from the back. I was so relieved and in one hysterical breath, I told him everything. The expression on his face darkened, and he said to me very curtly, You stay here. I walked to the window as he exited the store. He took three steps outside, whistled, and with arms out on either side, he made a come here motion. Out of the darkness came twenty really scary guys from both sides. He pointed to the cab and said something that I didn't quite make out. Whatever it was, they swarmed the cab and they tried to flip it over. That cab burned rubber peeling out of the parking lot. The men then looked back at the store window in Houston, laughed, nodded, and they disappeared back into the darkness. It was surreal. My jaw was on the floor and Houston came back inside with a grin. I don't think he'll be back. I couldn't thank him enough. He was my hero at that point, hands down. It had started to rain, so he and his friend walked me home under a giant umbrella. There are no words to describe the restoration of my faith in humanity that night. Cliché as it sounds, there really is light in the darkest of places, and kindness in the most unexpected of places. I was 18 years old and was looking for a place to move in before I started my first semester of college, since living about two hours away in the backwoods wasn't very practical. The first place I looked into was great. Safe area, close to my job location, 10 minutes from school, etc. The only issue was when I went to sign up for the place. Pricing had gone up significantly since they last updated their website. Not knowing this, I put down my non-refundable deposit and was out $850 in less than two hours. Ouch. So now, I'm out a significant chunk of money, set to start my new job in less than a week and to have no place to move into. Here comes and my mom with an idea. Look for a room to rent on Craigslist. I know stupid, but I was desperate and she just wanted to help. After browsing, I found a room available for rent that was within my price range and decided to scope out the place. I met with my soon-to-be roommate who we'll call B. And B was a gay man, yes it's important, in his early 30s. He was new to the area, a born-again Christian, very laid back and just seemed like a cool guy in general. I met him with my mother and stepfather, none of us getting a weird vibe from him and after he showed me the room and private bathroom, and we decided to go for it. The only thing my stepdad insisted on was installing a slide lock on the door before I moved in. I handed B my deposit and he handed me my keys telling me to go ahead and start moving in my things. Less than 48 hours later, I was moved in and waving bye to my parents. The morning I moved in, B wasn't there. No biggie, it was a Sunday morning and I assumed he was at church or something. Lunchtime rolled around and I figured a Sunday brunch. Afternoon came by and I sent him a text. Evening I called, no answer. 8pm, 10pm, nothing. Finally, I got tired and decided to screw it. One last text and I'm going to bed. Around 1am, I woke up to someone knocking on the front door. It took me a second to remember where I was, but once I did, I was curious if B ever made it home. The knock he continued and I thought maybe B forgot his house key or something, and I came out into the living room to open the door. B wasn't on the other side. 
It was a thin lady with ratty brown hair looking around confused. One of the first things I noticed was she was in a dirty t-shirt. It was late December and like 32 degrees outside. I'd been around enough druggies in my day to know she was probably gacked out. Regardless, I smiled and talked. Um, hi, can I help? Is B here? She interrupted me and stuck her head through the door to look inside. I don't think so, he hasn't been here all day. Are you a friend of his? I'm actually really worried about him. She suddenly shoved past me and into the house before answering. No, he won't answer my text or calls. Where's he at? I don't know, ma'am. Your guess is as good as mine. I chuckled nervously. Legit worried that my new roommate could be dead or hurt somewhere and no one knows it. She looked back to the doorway and I followed her gaze and almost shit bricks. A giant man steps to the doorway. He was a very dark, complected black man wearing our dark clothing. Black jeans, a black turtleneck, black boots. He was standing a bit behind her on the porch. And this guy was tall, like really tall. He barely looked like he fit through the door without having to duck under her. The woman starts pacing around the living room, asking me again and again if I knew where B was. Before she got too carried away, the man told her they should sit down and chill for a minute before getting her to sit down with him on the couch. I cautiously sat across from them on the love seat across the room. From here on, I'll call the girl CL and the guy BA. After a pace or two of awkward silence, I try to make small talk with the two of them, asking them how they knew B, their names, and don't remember them, where they're from, etc. Trying to use what southern hospitality I have to make the situation better, hoping that it doesn't get out of hand and dangerous. I quickly realized B.A. was sober and didn't seem to have anything going on with him like what the chick did. He stayed cool and level with me the entire time he had a hand firmly gripped on C.L.'s shoulder. All of a sudden, C.L. jumps up and says that she has to use the bathroom. I told her where my bathroom was and she quickly told me that she wanted to use B's instead. I argued a bit, telling her I wasn't comfortable with her doing that since he wasn't home. She ignored me and went towards the back of the house where B's room, and I assumed the master bath shutting the room's door behind her. B.A. leaned forward, elbows on his knees and just stared at me for a while, looking me over and honestly making me a bit nervous, easy since I was already a bit on edge. He finally spoke after a long pause. What are you doing here, girl? I moved up here for college. How old are you? How old do I look? I guess something in the early mid-20 range. I told him I was 18. He cursed, sounding legit concerned. You're not from around here. Not a question of fact. He knew that I was in over my head. That I was uncomfortable in questioning what I was even doing in that house with the two strangers at 1am, and that I was honestly afraid. Do you know about B's past? When I told him no, B.A. unleashed a whole load of information to me. B used to do drugs like hard stuff. He's new to the area due to his drug issues, and that's how he knew C.L. B is supposedly clean now except for the occasional thing. All this stuff I figured honestly, B looked like he had lived a rougher life, and I wasn't going to judge him for his past. B.A. sighed and asked me something I wasn't expecting. You haven't done anything with him, right? Obviously, no, he was gay. Needles or nothing. Again, no, I was clean. Good, gonna be real with you. B's got it, so be careful, alright? Guy should have told you. Also, I ain't sure, but I think he gets his money from doing some bad stuff. So keep your head down until you get the heck out. CL came back into the living room then, and BA stood up and told her that they were leaving. She put up a bit of a fight about it, but he quickly escorted her through the hallway, yelling at her to shut up and wait in the car. Before he left, he told me that I wasn't safe there. Told me to leave, be smart, stay in school, and be better than all of them. He wished me goodnight and shut the door. 
I jumped up and locked it. Not gonna lie, I had a meltdown panic attack. Welcome to the city, kid. Next morning, B was home. He asked if someone was over. I identified the woman and told me that she had raided his medicine cabinet last night. Told me that it was okay, but to never let anyone in if they mentioned his name. Said people will come around that he doesn't want around. Told me that he was going out and he left for the day. The next two days kind of blur together, so my apologies. I figured out B's job the next night when I heard him open the back door into his house with a hookup. The guy left. I heard B tell him that he can't use the front door and to go through the backyard. And this repeated, I kid you not, around five times that night. Until I finally left my room to pee. And I see a guy leaning over the kitchen counter. The dude spun around to see me standing there and quickly adjusted his pants while cursing. B straightened himself from his kneeling position a few seconds later. The guy opened his wallet, handed B some cash and left out the back door. Great. I went back to my room and called my best friend and her husband, crying and wanting out. They were staying at a hotel in town that night and invited me to come stay with them. I moved back home again until I found a new place. No more Craigslist ads, no more strange roommates. I was out in other 800s from the B situation and so I felt even more defeated. B knew what he was doing. He knew that he was putting me in danger by lying to me and bringing me into that situation. B.A. got his nickname because that's what he became to me. An angel. If he never would have warned me that night, I could have been in real trouble. And possibly even gotten sick because of this reckless behavior about this guy that I lived with. I would love to meet B.A. again and thank him, but not B. Him and CL can do their own thing far, far away from me.